Macroeconomic policy are the economic decisions and policy taken at a national level. And so they really focus on how a country collects money and how much money it collects, mostly through taxes but also through other ways, and how it chooses to spend that money. Those policies together are called fiscal policy. The monetary policy is about decisions of how much money is in the economy, which a government also decides. Um, and so macroeconomic policy involves everything from deciding whether to spend money on building a road, for example, or creating pipelines to carry water to a village. Or when it comes to tax, it involves questions like should we tax tobacco and alcohol or should we tax bread? All those types of questions make up macroeconomic policy. So macroeconomic policy impacts really uh, every aspect of women and men's economic lives and therefore it impacts every uh, dimension of gender equality. Whether you're talking about um, violence against women or women's lacking political representation in society or lacking women's land rights, for example, all of those are representations of existing inequalities in society. And macroeconomic policy can basically exacerbate those inequalities or alleviate them depending on the decisions of macroeconomic policymakers. One example is when a government decides to cut healthcare spending. Um, that can disproportionately impact women because women tend to have a higher burden taking care of the sick in society than men. And so what that can mean is that women stay at home more instead of going to work because they have to take care of the sick because the hospital has just closed. Now they're at home and they're not making money and so suddenly their whole um, bargaining position in the household has changed because they don't bring in their own money and so this change in bargaining position inside the household is one of the things that can contribute to uh, domestic violence. Another example is decisions around tax. Governments can decide uh, what economic activities they tax from uh, owning land to making an income to consumption and in that there are big differences between how men and women are taxed, even though tax policy makers usually don't think about those differences. So for example, uh, a consumer tax can be placed on different types of products. And we already know that what men tend to buy and what women tend to buy can be very different in different countries. So for example, tobacco and alcohol tends to be bought a lot more by men, whereas household products and basic food items like bread make up a much, much larger percentage of what women buy. And so making a difference between choosing to tax bread and instead choosing to collect that same amount of revenue from tobacco and alcohol is one way in which policymakers can, can, can try to help women through tax policy. International finance institutions like the World Bank and especially the IMF really influence macroeconomic policy making at the national level. Because they are lenders, they have a huge amount of influence uh, over the countries that they lend money to. They actually can directly decide or help decide a country what their macroeconomic policy should be in order to get the loans. And then the other way, they are considered as the international experts on macroeconomic policy making. International finance institutions, but particularly the IMF, they are considered um, really expert. And so almost all governments in the world look to these institutions to tell them what is acceptable macroeconomic policy. So that's how they're influential. The traditional way in which macroeconomic policy has been approached and continues to be approached is generally gender blind, as in they don't recognize how men and women are differently impacted by macroeconomic policies. And as a result of that, we see a lot of the types of policies that these institutions come out with generally continue to overwhelmingly undermine women's rights and gender equality. An example of that is austerity. So austerity is a, a type of policy that is being promoted by loads of international finance institutions and it's cutting of essential public services like education. And what can happen is 
Um, if education programs are cut, we know that girls already have a harder time than boys to access education, particularly in developing countries. And so when these programs are cut, we know that that will disproportionately impact girls. So at the national level, it's really important to actually start just with your national government and in particular your finance ministry or your treasury where macroeconomic policy decisions are actually made and just look at how they collect taxes, what the public budget looks like and start questioning those decisions and start challenging them.